Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's AMA. I'm Tim from Ledger, and today I'm going to do my best to answer any question that you have. Um, so feel free to drop them in the comments, and um, yeah, we'll just get started right away. Uh, so let me see what we have so far. Uh, first question is when ship stacks. Um, I don't have any updates on that. That's going to be uh, this summer. Um, I don't have any further updates on that. Um, Brett Richardson's asking, need help with correctly setting up Gnosis Wallet as an additional signer. That is a bit beyond the scope of what we can set up in uh, the AMA series. It's, it's highly technical and it will uh, require a little bit of work on your part. But um, you can reach out to our uh, team on Discord and uh, that, that would probably be the place that I would recommend reaching out to us on and they'll be able to help you out with that step by step. Um, so yeah, so ask for one of the Ledger Support Ninjas uh, on our Discord team, and they'll, they'll help you get all set up with the, uh, the Gnosis safe. All right. Yeah, yeah uh, Yaniv, yep, that's correct. Uh, sometime this summer is, uh, is when we're shooting for that. Um, RISC is saying hi, hello back. Um, I'd like to know why Lend Menu is gone from Ledger Live. It was so easy to use. Um, do you know if this Lend feature will come back sooner? What are our options to Lend assets safely now? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. Because it is gone from Ledger Live, but you can actually still use Compound to Lend assets using your Ledger. Um, you just have to connect directly to the Compound website. Uh, let me pull that up. I believe we have a Help Center article. Let me switch over here to the other, other screen. We're going to go uh, Lend um, Ledger Live Compound. I can't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure it's this one. OK, cool. Yeah, so the Lend feature has been disabled. Um, and so you can't do it directly from Ledger Live. However, you can connect directly to the Compound platform. And it looks like we do have um, a Help Center article for that. See. Let me scroll down and make sure that this does have the steps to actually. This is a the older um, back when it was a feature in Ledger Live. Okay. So it looks like it doesn't. I thought we did have one, and we may we may actually. Let me let me go back. Let's go connect Ledger to Compound. Hmm. You know, I don't see it, so I'm going to go and just pull this article up, and then I'm going to go directly to Compound. It does, it does mention it right here. If you can't see the Lend tab, you can Lend assets directly on Compound. So let's just go to Compound, um, and I'll just, show you, I'll just show you the steps. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and connect my ledger. Enter my pin real quick. I'm going to open up the Ethereum application. Put that down. Select Ledger here. It detects a Nano S Plus. We'll connect to that. Like the connection failed. Let's see what's going on here. We go ahead and close Ledger Live. This tab. Let me go to try again. Oh, look at that. Uh, it's enabled. Let's make sure that's enabled. Settings. It is. Here we go. Okay. Go back. And let's exit out of this. I actually prefer to um, let's try this. See what happens. All right, I'm going to reopen the website. There may be a browser that is a uh, Browser extension that may be messing with this. Let's go back here. Ethereum. Got it, got it, got it. Switch to Ethereum. I'm all over the place today. I apologize for that. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to be working that well right now. I'm not too sure what's going on. Um, let me try something else. Let me just make sure that my connection is good. 
So it is detecting my nano. Good to go. Okay. No, no, no issues there. We'll go. I'm going to break this connection. I'm going to restart. I'm only going to try this one more time before I move on. Sometimes, sometimes connecting to DAPS is just really finicky and you just kind of have to try a bunch of times till it works. Um, but I don't want to take up too much of the time on this one item. However, we will try again because I've connected to this site in the past without issue. Okay. Maybe that could be the issue right there. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can connect through MetaMask. Yeah, it seems like the Compound website is having some issues right now. Try again. Try connecting through MetaMask. Okay. Okay, so you can still connect through MetaMask. Um, so you'd have to connect your ledger to MetaMask and you connect to uh, um, compound.finance uh, directly to the website. And you can, you can supply ETH, you can supply USDC, whatever it is that you're trying to supply. You can do it right from the, uh, right from the web app. Um, yeah, I, it, it was working not too long ago. The last time I connected, I connected directly with the ledger, which is pretty cool. Um, but for whatever reason, it's being finicky right now. So you always have the option to connect through MetaMask whenever you have that issue, um, which it's, it's just as secure. It's, it's the same level of security. It's just a little bit of additional steps. Then you have to import your account into MetaMask, then connect through MetaMask, um, and then route all your transactions through MetaMask as well. Um, but it's, it's okay. All right. Let's see. I uh, need to have an easier way to add HNTs to the Nano X. I'm not sure if I know what you mean by HNTs. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if I know what you mean by that. Um, I know that HNT is for like the Helium network. Um, maybe that's what you're talking about. I'm not too sure. Um, so if you want to provide further clarification on that in the comments, that would be great. Um, Smile Ego is asking how to set up my ledger as a new device. Um, I can go ahead and show you that. Let me grab this Nano. I got this spare Nano S Plus sitting right here. Uh, so I'm going to switch this over to the big monitor. I am going to exit out of these. All right. So what you want to do is you want to connect your Nano to power. Um, looks like this one has already been reset. So this is the screen that you'll uh, see when you first plug in your Nano. It says basically, you know, what, welcome to Ledger Nano S Plus, or uh, if it's a Nano X, it'll say welcome to Ledger Nano X or Nano S, whatever Ledger you have. It's, it's all going to look the same. Then so you scroll to the right, and you'll have, if you keep scrolling, you'll eventually have two options. You'll have set up as a new device or restore from recovery phrase. You're going to want to choose the option to set up as a new device. And then that will derive a, um, it'll generate a new recovery phrase for you um, from the device that you can write down. And then of course, if you already have a recovery phrase, you can choose the restore from recovery phrase option to import the recovery phrase. Break that connection right there. Put that back. All right. Um, we got, Rodger Hard is asking, how safe is it to stake ETH using Ledger? Um, it's so there's a couple of different ways you can stake ETH through Ledger. Um, it's all going to be basically liquid staking options if you do it through Ledger Live, um, either Lido or Kiln. Um, and I believe Stater as well um, is also there. Um, so it's it's safe in that. It's, you're not going to give up your private keys. You're not going to give up um, control of your assets, like of, of your wallet. Um, well, that's not entirely true. With, with, so with liquid staking, the way it works is you actually deposit your ETH. So let's say you stake through Lido. That's the, the most popular one right now. That's through Ledger Live. Um, you actually give Lido your ETH. Uh, they, they have they have custody of your ETH and in return, they give you a token um, called ST ETH, uh, which is uh, staked ETH. Um, and the staked ETH is, um, 
it's a token on the Ethereum blockchain and it will earn rewards, uh, liquid staking rewards, um, just from holding it in your wallet. Um, and then you can swap back out of it at any time. So um, the only danger that could come is if something were to happen to Lido, who does have custody of your ETH. And let's say that something were to happen with, it's not likely to happen. They've been through like, you know, a, a roller coaster of events and they're still, they're still here. They're still around. Uh, they're still strong. So there's really no reason at this point to think that anything would happen. However, it is important to understand when you are staking through any of these platforms that give you um, a separate token um, in exchange for your ETH um that you're not actually holding your eth anymore you are holding a token that lido guarantees is going to be swapped out for a one-to-one -one value which they have so far honored um however uh if anything did happen to that token then it could you could potentially lose funds in that way um but again i have no reason to think that this would happen however as a um, cold storage hardware wallet security company, I have to be totally upfront with you on the difference between holding ETH in your wallet and holding a token that represents ETH in your wallet because they are two different things. All right. Uh, Yaniv is saying, hello, hello. Uh, where can I get some stickers? And if there's any update about MetaMask Ledger Live iOS. Um, so stickers, that's a good question. I don't, you know, I don't know if we, I don't think we actually sell like just stickers on our website. Um, I know you, you get stickers with every, uh, let me open up a random, I got a bunch of nanos around me cause this is where our, uh, we do our live onboardings every week. Um, so like your, your nano box, really hard to open sometimes <laughs> will come with stickers in it. I have this little envelope right here. So like, for like. If you buy a nano, it'll come with stickers. But other than that, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not really sure. And that actually may be a kind of a cool idea to float by to like sell sticker packs um, on our website uh, for like really cheap. Um, but yeah, so I would say, uh, I mean, you know, I guess buying a new nano would get you stickers, but that might not be worth it um, if you're just <laughs> looking for the stickers and not a new nano. Um, but yeah. Um, also, update about MetaMask and Ledger Live on iOS. Um, as of right now, I don't have any updates on that. To be completely honest, I'm, I'm not 100% sure uh, where the holdup is. I just know that the, uh, the matter is being worked on by, between our developers and MetaMask developers, and they're kind of they're, um, colluding to you know, make this happen. And so I don't have a whole lot of insight on like, the, the specific challenges that they're facing or, or what's going on with that. Um, Every time I ask, I just say it's going to be soon. So I just have to trust that they are doing you know, their best to make it happen. Um, so I can't give any exact updates on that. However, it was recently brought to my attention that there is a, another wallet that does work um, on mobile um, that you can connect your ledger to via Bluetooth. And it's called the Rainbow Wallet. Let me see. And I believe we have a Help Center article for that. Let me see if I can find that for you real quick. Right, got it. Ooh. Cool. So go to here, found the Help Center article. So you can connect your ledger to Rainbow Wall. And keep in mind, I haven't actually done this yet. And I currently don't have mobile to uh, really test this on right now. Um, so right now, the Rainbow Wallet exclusively supports Nano X devices. Um, so it'll only work with a Nano X. Um, but it does look like the, our, um, our uh, help center team really put together a cool article here with like a video and everything. Um, so yes, you would connect with your Ethereum application. Um, and you can go to rainbow.me to download uh, the rainbow app for your OS. And yeah, it looks like you can follow these instructions. Wow, this is a nice article. I'm going to go ahead and link this for you. Um, check, check this out. If you're eagerly waiting on MetaMask um, and you really want to manage um, on iOS with um, uh, via Bluetooth on your Nano X, it looks like the Rainbow Wallet might be the way to go for now until MetaMask is uh, is fully ready to to roll out. Um, so I'm gonna go mobile. Um, yeah, mobile connection. You'll know what I mean. There we go. Yeah, check out that Help Center article. I just uh, it's the one that I was just looking at just now. Um, yeah. All right. 
Um, Texas Life. Hi, is everyone's Ethereum assets copied onto Pulse Chain still safe in cold storage? And then will you add Pulse Chain to Ledger Live? Yeah, I believe that is in the works. Um, looks like we have two Pulse Chain questions right away. Uh, we've been getting a lot of requests for Pulse Chain, a lot, a lot of people reaching out to us. Um, and so that is really the main driver of what we, um, what our developers decide to, you know, build into Ledger Live. It's basically whatever is in the highest demand by our users is probably where we're going to go. And we've been getting a lot of questions about Pulse Chain. So I do believe that it is in the works. Um, I can't give any the exact date. I'm not really 100% sure of like when that would, uh, how long that would take and what that kind of looks like. Um, but to answer your question a little bit more specifically, uh, you said Texas Life it asked our app, Assets copied onto Pulse Chain still safe in cold storage, 100%. Um, so basically, um, the Pulse Chain will be an EVM chain that um, is built on, you know, off of Ethereum, but its own blockchain, if, if I understand it correctly. And so, any assets that you have stored on that chain um, will still be uh, your private keys for those accounts will still be backed up on your Nano. So you'd still be able to, you know, add that chain to like a third-party wallet and manage it that way. Um, although I, I haven't really played around with it a whole lot, it's it's very new, and I just haven't really had a chance to play around with it. But in fact, I'm gonna make a note. I have, to, I have to leave myself notes all the time. Uh, I'm going to do it right here on my notes application of like uh, th things to look into. The, the, the one last time that I had to look into was ordinals. Um, so this time it is Tim, look into Pulse Chain. Oh, all right. So hopefully on the next live stream, I'll have a little bit more information for you on that. Um. Uh, Census 2000 is asking, can I clone my ledger and use it at two different locations at the same time? Can I do more than twins? Yes. So your ledger is only the bearer of your private keys and it's only the bearer of the private keys that you put in it. So you can actually import, uh, I just actually just showed the, um, when I, uh, the, the last person that asked, um, uh, can I, how do I set up my ledger as a new device? And I showed both options for restore from recovery phrase and set up as new device. So if you choose the option to restore from recovery phrase, you can import your recovery phrase into an unlimited amount of nanos. You can make, you can make a thousand copies of your, um, of, of your recovery phrase on different nanos and you'd be able to sign transactions from any one of those nanos at any time from anywhere. Um, it doesn't matter. So yes, you can do that. Um, and uh, but just uh, just keep in mind that um, you do also still want to have a good, nice, strong pin um, because anyone who gets their hands on that nano, uh, they would be able to sign transactions from it as well. So um, if you're making a whole bunch of copies of your nanos of your, to access your different accounts, um, yeah, just make sure that you uh, always keep security in mind uh, on that. But yeah, definitely. Um, Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people are uh, are waiting for that on the pulse chain. So yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely in the works. Oh, helium tokens. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Uh, let me take a look real quick. Oh, that's right. I closed Ledger Live. Alright. I have real quick. I'm gonna go back to this main shot right here. All right. Oop. Check my ledger. Okay. Go to the my ledger tab. We're gonna allow a secure connection with ledger. All right. Yeah, as far as uh, as far as I know, Helium is not. I was just double checking, but as far as I know, Helium is not um, supported in Ledger Live, um, unless it's it's for like the Nano X. And I just um, here I can check real quick, but I don't believe so. I mean, let me let me just double check though.
Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I don't I don't believe it is supported in Ledger Live. So um and I don't know I honestly I don't know off the top of my head uh what sort of development is being done on Helium right now for HNT tokens. Um yes. Uh, Smile Ego is asking, it's possible to buy crypto with USDT and Ledger. Um, it, not technically to buy, uh, but to swap. You can, you can uh, swap using USDT. Um, so we have a couple of different options for that. If you're swapping into uh, like an EVM chain, um, Ethereum chain, um, into other tokens on Ethereum or into ETH itself, um, or perhaps on like Polygon or Binance Smart Chain, um, you can probably use um, one of the DEX aggregators that we have, which um, will uh, will like um, basically the like Paraswap and One Inch. And what they do is they go out and they look for uh, the best rates on all the DEXs, and then they they let you perform swaps from Ledger Live. Um, so you can swap that way, and then you can also swap um, using Changely. Um, so Changely is a centralized exchange uh, that pr um, provides swaps for our customers. So you'll probably have to do KYC if you're going to swap through them. Um, but that will also allow you other options like to swap into like, let's say, USDT to Bitcoin or, you know, some some um, some chain outside of ETH or whatever. Um, otherwise, you would need to use a bridge. So the, the DEX aggregators would be good for staying on on the EVM chains. But then if you wanted to swap around between all the different blockchains, I would check out Changely. Um, and to do that, you just go to the swap tab here. I'll show you. You just go to the, you go here to the swap tab. And then it's already detecting my, my ETH account that I have added. So we're just going to go right here. And let's say I wanted to go from ETH to Bitcoin. Um, oh, look, it looks like CIC is an option as well. Um, oh, and CIC does not require registration. I forgot about that. Yeah, so you can actually perform swaps. Uh, I would go check out the swap tab and um, you know see what you can. I don't think I have any USDT. Oh, I have an empty USDT account. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> there's nothing in there. Um, but uh, yeah. So, yeah, I would check that out. All right, Kevin Tan is asking how to store HBAR with Ledger. So HBAR is a little complex. Um, they actually use, um, I believe it's called hash graph technology. Um, so they derive their accounts a little bit differently than like the, the standard BIT39 um, standard for, for HID wallets. And Ledger Live doesn't have the ability to uh, derive or to create accounts on the Hedera network. Um, only certain wallets have that functionality. Um, and one of them is Hashpack. So that's why we always um, recommend people to um, uh, create their initial Hedera account using Hashpack. And then from there, you can, after you create it in Hashpack, you can then go and add that account to Ledger Live. Um, and it'll look a little bit different. It'll be like a 0 0.0, 0.1. It'll have like a, a different format for the wallet address. Um, here, let me find the Help Center article for you. Create HBAR Hashpack Ledger. There it is. And this is actually a really good article. Um, I believe there's, yeah, there's even a video that goes through all the steps. Um, I would say this is one of the more uh, complex um, wallets to connect your ledger to and go through because it requires just a bunch of, a bunch of steps. Um, but it's not that bad. Um, and it's all laid out pretty, pretty nice for you here, um, including a video. So I'll go ahead and link this here for you. Oops. H bar ledger. Okay. All right. When will the ledger crypto credit card be available to customers in the United States? I get this question um, pretty pretty frequently. Um, so the thing with the it's it's I know it's it's the crypto life card um, powered through ledger, but it's actually or uh, that and you go to it through Ledger Live, but it's actually fully controlled and operated by our partner banks. Um, so it would really be up to them to um, uh, to determine like where and when that they're going to have support. Uh, we don't really have anything to do with that. Um, and it's based on whatever regulatory um, 
issues, concerns, wh whatever it is that they're currently dealing with in order to get support into different regions. Um, I can't really speak on that because I, I don't really have a lot of insight into um, what they're up to. But um, yeah, so I but I do have a um, here we go Got it here. I have a good um, email address that you can email for questions about Crypto Life Card, um, and it, it, you can contact their customer support directly. Um, and it's just support at clcards.com. I'll, I'll put it down here. All right. So for questions about the Crypto Life Card, shoot this email your questions, and uh, they'll get back to you and be able to help you out with that. All right. Oh, cool. We got Peachy in the chat answering questions. Thanks, Peachy. Um, appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> looks like we, we, we double sent that article, but uh, yeah, that's okay. Yep. Yep. Looks like um, he's dropping the articles to connect to Ledger. Uh, connect Ledger to MetaMask, and then you can uh, add the Pulse Chain network to MetaMask, and then you can add your tokens manually there. And it's still technically considered cold storage um, doing doing these processes. Um, let's see. Uh, Jamie is asking when Lightning Network. Um, so Lightning Network is kind of interesting. Um, it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit hard to, um, it might not be something that we could do right away. It would require major, major changes to Ledger Live in order for us to incorporate Lightning Network. Um, I'm not the most knowledgeable person on this subject, um, but I can offer what insight that I, that I can basically um, to it. So basically the way the Lightning Network work is the Lightning Network is a um, technically a layer on top of Bitcoin. And it's actually a custodial, it's a custodial service. So basically you would have to, to use the Lightning Network, you actually have to deposit Bitcoin into that Lightning Network node, which then can, uh, which acts as like a credit to, be in, to then be moved around the Lightning Network. I always, um, I always uh, compare it to like, if you had like a prepaid uh, Visa debit card um, that you use to like make purchases like around, um, you would have to load money onto that prepaid card. And Lightning Network works, I don't wanna say like, like for all intents and purposes, it works very similarly to that. Um, obviously under the hood, it's, it's super, super complex. Um, but for that reason, I can't say with any certainty whether or not we will have Lightning Network support in Ledger Live. If we do, um, it'll be, well, people much smarter than me that would figure that out. But as far as I know right now, um, I don't think that that is a thing being developed at this time. All right. Okay, cool. Like Peachy answered George. Okay. All right. All right. R H. Um, one second. Sorry, one second. Okay, all right. So let me go ahead and show you real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Um, all right, he's asking, how do I change the name on the ledger instead of account to anything I want? Let me just go ahead and show you real quick. I actually don't even need that uh, plugged in. I will go to the big monitor view. Um, we'll go here to Ledger Live. Go to my accounts. So open up any account um, that you have in Ledger Live. You can also do it when you uh, during the account adding uh, process, um, but you can also do it just from here. So I'll open up this little ETH account here. I'm gonna go to edit account. So it's a little wrench icon in the top right corner. And then you'll see that you have the account name and you can, you can just change this to whatever you want. 
So ETH plus. All right, cool. And then you can see it just changes the name. And these names are arbitrary. It's only for Ledger Live. Um, assigning a name in Ledger Live to one of your crypto accounts um, doesn't actually change the name of that account, like on the blockchain or anything. The blockchain just it just knows the address of that account. Um, this is just for you and Ledger Live. Um, so yeah, you can change them at any time um, to whatever you want. And then also saying, make a video, RX is all saying, make a video on the types of messages um, and transactions not to approve and sign. So that's, that's actually a really good, um, it's, it, it's more, um, wait, wait, how do I change the name on the ledger instead of account to anything I want? I'm talking about ledger. Oh, you're talking about ledger extension. Oh, okay. Um, I might not be able to show you that today. Um, but as far as the video of the types of messages and transactions not to approve and sign, um, it's very situational. Um, and the, the thing is, all of the um, when, when we talk about um, when we talk about malicious contracts, malicious uh, malicious um, things that you're signing on your nano, it's less about the actual uh, type of transaction that you're approving, and more about the situational awareness of when when you should and shouldn't sign these transactions. Um, for instance. If you are listing your NFT for sale on OpenSea, you're going to have to sign a set approval for all transaction, which gives OpenSea's uh, contract, Seaport, the ability to access that NFT collection to sell it on your behalf when someone comes in and offers the correct amount. Um, and so in that case, it's perfectly okay to sign a set approval for all transaction. Um, but like if you were to be on like, you know, a site to um, like, for instance, like you, you think you're on like a swapping site and you're trying to swap from one one uh, token to another and the your um, your notification pops up as a set approval for all that may that may throw uh, throw some red flags, you know, like because it's like, oh, well, I, I'm supposed to be swapping. Maybe a token approval would be appropriate in this situation. But why is it having me sign a set approval for all transaction? Um, so it is very nuanced and it's it's difficult to um it's difficult to pinpoint exactly like like when a transaction would be bad versus when it would be okay to sign it's really just very situational um i just realized that my light wasn't on i hope that lighting is a little bit better um so yeah so that would be kind of my best advice to that however you know you're right like maybe we should have a little bit more um, information on these different transaction types. I do know that our Twitter team puts out regular tweets that talks about stuff like this. Um, so if you if you're not following us on on Twitter at um, I don't, and I'll drop our uh, Twitter handles here for you in the chat. Um, that's a great place to like just get like random tidbits of knowledge like that. Um, I don't know if it's every day, but it's very frequently that our Twitter uh, handle. Put that out and you can go to our Twitter page and look at previous tweets and kind of like get some information that way. Uh. All right. All right, so follow us here. All right, cool. Um, so RISC is saying why Lend has gone from Ledger Live menu. Um, to be honest, I, I, I'm not entirely sure uh, why that feature was pulled out of um, Ledger Live. I, I don't have a good answer for you on that. Um, I believe that was actually before my time here at Ledger that that function was removed. Um, but I, I showed you earlier um, connecting to it through MetaMask. Uh, you can still, like if you already have funds that you've lent on, um, if that you've lent on uh oh cool awesome thanks peachy yeah he, he has a so peachy has a lot of the hookups on um like token transactions and stuff he would actually be the person to ask on that um 
But yes, but um, if you do already have assets lent out on Compound, you can connect in the way that I just showed you and you can manage in that way. You can withdraw it or you can lend new assets. Um, it's it's just as safe connecting directly to the Compound website via MetaMask. It's just, it's just not as convenient. Um, but yeah, I, I can't be certain exactly why that feature was taken out. Um, I don't think it was due to a security concern because it's still possible to connect. Um, it must have been from something else. Um, cool. So it looks like we kind of reached the end of our questions. Let me just scroll up real quick and make sure I miss any. Um, okay. So since we had a couple questions about Pulse Chain, let's just uh, go through and figure out Pulse Chain together. Um, why not? All right. Cool. I'm going to switch shots here. Okay. So we are going to be using MetaMask for this. And in. up the ethereum application put that down all right so we go to metamask here um so the first things first uh if you haven't already done this you're going to need to go here this is actually uh fyi i just learned this well i didn't just learn this but i didn't know this for a long time this is called the identicon the little colorful circle thing up here uh, that's how you get to like your settings menu so yeah just a little random tidbit identicon so click on the identicon and then you go to Connect Harbor Wallet right here. Um, select Ledger. Hit Continue. It sees the Nano S Plus right here already paired. We're going to go ahead and connect to it. We're going to derive our wallet addresses. I already have it uh, added in, and you see it's grayed out right there. Um, I'm not going to add any of these other empty accounts. This is the only one I need. So I'm going to cancel, but uh, at this point, you would, you would highlight that, and you'd click Unlock. Come back out. Now we can go here chainlist.org and we'll see if they have pulse chain they do all right so we're going to go ahead and add that to metamask and we're going to switch right to pulse chain okay so now when you open up metamask you'll see that it's got the pulse chain um oh sweet look at that i've got um a little bit of pulse right there on the pulse chain um, yeah, so basically, um, I guess I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, but um, yeah, so that, that's how you would do it. And then, um, so MetaMask is a little, a little crazy. Um, it doesn't automatically, at least as far as I know, it doesn't automatically, oh no, it does actually automatically detect some tokens. I can't be certain if it would for the Pulse Chain, but uh, if not, you can just go to your account. So you can go here and then let's go to here, go to... Hmm. Yeah, I'm having a hard time finding it. Let's go. Let's do it this way. Go. Pulse chain um, block. But yeah, it looks like it's definitely like still. There we go. All right. So yeah, you go to the block explorer. Uh, I'm going to show you on Etherscan though, because I don't have any tokens on Pulse Chain. But yeah, so you basically search for your wallet address on the block explorer. You look at your tokens that you have. Um, let's say I have these uh, chain link tokens right here. You go get the contract address right from the block explorer. Then you can go to MetaMask. And I'm going to switch back to Ethereum just to show you. Uh, it's already got this in here, so I'm going to go ahead and hide that, remove that. And then now it doesn't see it, so then you would click on the bottom, import tokens, custom token. Put in that contract address and it should auto detect it, and then you can just add that token. And you can do the same thing from the Pulse Chain uh, with any of your tokens that you may have um, on the Pulse Chain. Um, so yeah, MetaMask is super versatile like that. All right. All right. Cool. Which I'm not missing. Okay, so it's like Morgan J, is it okay for me to plug and unplug my Ledger device several times a day? Will this wear down the physical hardware? That's like, it's a really good question. Um, so um, basically, 
the USB-C connector is really, it's a really good connector. Um, it can be disconnected, connected thousands and thousands of times. So, um, and like this, uh, this Nano, my Nano S Plus right here, I, I, I've been using this since I first started the job, basically since it first came out, uh, this device, uh, cause technically I started before they released this, but, um, and I, it's my main device that I use every day just cause it's, it's super easy to use. I plug this thing in and unplug it probably a couple of dozen times a day. And I've been doing that for the last year and it, I haven't noticed any issues, no, no, no degradation, um, with it. Um, that's not to say that you can't get like a faulty device or if you're not careful, like it is possible to uh, cause damage while, while doing it. And maybe, it, um, you know, reduces the lifespan on it. But as long as you're careful when you're plugging it in, it should last quite a while. The USB, uh, USB-C connector type is a really good connector type. It looks like Peachy is helping um, George with his question. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Luther Raman is uh, having trouble connecting the Nano X to MetaMask uh, and couldn't connect. Um, so if you're able to drop in the comments, I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about like all the different things that, or some of the different things are so many. Um, that could be causing that connection issue. But if you have more information, like specific error messages you're getting, um, drop it in the uh, comments. Um, but basically, when you're connecting to a third party uh, wallet, such as MetaMask, um, it's important to keep in mind that your ledger can only have one secure connection at a time. That means that if there is another wallet um, browser extension that you have installed, that takes priority over MetaMask because it's a more aggressive um, wallet extension, then that could be causing connections with MetaMask. Uh, off top of my head, one that does that is the Rabi wallet. Um, it's a great wallet, but if you do have it installed, um, then it could it could be causing that issue uh, where MetaMask can't connect because Rabi wallet's interfering with that. Um, so if you do have other browser extensions, try disabling all your other browser extensions. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Here, go here, exit out of some of these tabs that I got. All right. Uh, so basically you would come up here to the uh, little, like you see, I have a whole bunch of browser extensions. So I constantly have to go in and do that. Then you click on manage extensions and then you can just basically turn them on and off. Um, in fact, I think I have Rabi in here and I think I, I had to disable it because it kept it kept blocking. Oh no, I think I actually fully uninstalled it because of that. Um, but yeah, so um, that's one thing to look out for. Um, another thing is uh, which web browser are you using? Um, if you're using Firefox, uh, they recently um, had some update where they no longer ha uh, support the web HID uh, connection type. And so if you're using Firefox, it's likely just not going to work. Um, and it's just, it's just, you won't be able to connect very well. Um, so if you are using Firefox, I would definitely try, uh, try Chrome or Brave or um, Safari. Try, try a Chromium-based browser. Uh, those seem to work the best with, uh, with Ledger devices. Um, I personally use Google Chrome. And I never really have any issues. Um, another thing to look for when connecting to third-party wallets is make sure that the firmware on your device is fully up to date. Um, and the reason is because first off, if your firmware is not up to date, then you all, you also won't be getting the most recent update of the nano apps that go on. So like in this case, you would need the Ethereum app to connect to MetaMask. And so if your firmware is outdated, that means that you're likely not on the most up-to-date version of the ETH app because that would require, so the nano apps will give you progressive updates based on your firmware that you have installed. Um, so then you can be totally out of date in all these different areas. Um, so check to make sure you are on the latest version of every, oh, and then to make, uh, even more confusing, if you are not on the, uh, most up-to-date version of Ledger Live, then you may not get the most recent firmware update, which in turn can not, cause you to not have the most recent, uh, ETH app version. So you really, it's, it's th those three things, make sure everything's up to date. Uh, I believe the latest version of Ledger Live is 2.58. Uh, 0.0. Um, as of just the other day, a new version came out. Yes. Yep. 2.58.0. Um, and then I believe the 
It depends on what nano you're using uh, for the firmware update. But if you do have a firmware update available for your nano, uh, make, if you're on the latest version of Ledger Live, you will see that available in the My Ledger tab. It'll be an orange banner at the top that says firmware, uh, firmware update available. Uh, so make sure you install that and then make sure your nano app is up to date. Um, those three things are, are pretty big. Um, also, do you have the ETH app opened up um, prior to even uh, clicking on anything? Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you go here, if you go to MetaMask, you can see right here, I don't have my Nano connected. And I go to the Identicon, I click Connect Hardware Wallet. So if I select Ledger and hit Continue, and then uh, at this point realize that my Ledger is not connected with the ETH app opened, like at this point, it's probably not gonna work to plug in the Nano and try to do it retroactively. At this point, it's better just to cancel, completely close out of this, and start over. So you, uh, let me unlock it with my pin. Okay. I'm gonna open up the ETH app before I do anything else. Make sure that's opened up. It says application is ready on the screen. And then now I'll go in and click everything. Connect hardware wallets like Ledger. Hit continue. It detects my Nano S Plus now because it's uh, unlocked with the ETH app opened then we can connect to it. So that's really the, um, that's really mo mostly what I have on connecting to uh, MetaMask if you're having issues. Um, it could also be from like a myriad of other issues. Like um, it could be a USB port issue on your computer. It could be that your operating system for your computer is out of date and uh, has a bunch of required updates that are pending restart. That's super common. Um, and if that's the case, just uh, try uh, uh, restarting your computer, updating, making sure everything's uh, up to date. Uh, the, the, the key here is just making sure everything's up to date because things change so quickly that if one of your uh, items like your nano app or your firmware or your computer's operating system or even your if you're using google chrome your web browser itself requires updates are there any updates available for your web browser if so get those updated um, because that can cause things to just not communicate properly if everything's up to date but one thing is out of date then it no longer it, it could potentially no longer have the tools it needs to communicate with everything else properly and you can get you know, weird error messages. All right. Yep, yep, yep. All right. EG is handling stuff. All right. Okay. All right, so Matt is asking, um, I think, yeah, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, hey, I don't think PG answered this one. Okay, so Ryan X, Ryan, uh, Ryan X, um, I probably butchered that, is saying, if I have a Nano S Plus, but want a Nano X, can I just put in my recovery phrase and it will sync with Ledger Live or do I need to transfer my tokens? Yeah, there's no, no transfers necessary. Um, any device that you load your recovery phrase into will immediately become a clone of your original device. Um, your, your, your crypto is your recovery phrase. So as long as that recovery phrase is, is correctly imported into that Nano, Ledger Live won't even notice a difference. It'll just let you sign transactions from that Nano just as if it was your previous Nano. Um, and you can do that as many times as you want in as many different Nanos as you would like. Um, okay, cool. Like, PG answered uh, Ernest on his question. So... Like Matt is asking, lately I have to delete cash, clear cash uh, for my recent transactions to show up for export tax software. Yes, to export your CSV file. Otherwise, none of the new transactions are found. Any ideas? Yeah, this is, this is very common with Ledger Live. Uh, so basically, it helps to understand like, like what's going on um, behind the scenes with Ledger Live. Uh, and I'll go ahead and just shed a little bit of light on that. Um, so basically... 
uh, none of your crypto is actually stored in Ledger Live. Um, it, it looks like it's stored in Ledger Live, um, but it's not. And it's additionally, it's not even stored on your Nano. Um, your crypto only exists as a transaction on the blockchain that says this account, uh, this much, uh, you know, Bitcoin was sent to this Bitcoin account. That's how much Bitcoin it holds. And so that, that data all just exists on the blockchain uh, on its own decentralized network. And so what Ledger Live does is it allows you to um, create accounts, to derive accounts on these various blockchains using your recovery phrase. And then it shares only the public wallet address with Ledger Live. And so then Ledger Live is able to uh, send that public wallet address and search for it on a block explorer, uh, just like I was showing you with the Ethereum block explorer just a few minutes ago. Um, and it can pull in your account data. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so if you go here, we go to this MetaMask right here. You see that I have this ETH account in MetaMask. And then you come over here to Ledger Live and you can see that I have, uh, curiously, an ETH account right here that's got the exact same amount of ETH in it. And so basically what these two applications are doing is exactly the same. Uh, I went through the steps a few minutes ago to import an ETH account into MetaMask. And when you add your account to Ledger Live, it actually does the exact same thing. And so these are the same account. So that's why, you know, without issue, I can just go here and I can remove this account from MetaMask and just be gone. And then I can go in and I can just add it right back in without issues. And you can do the same thing with Ledger Live. You can add, remove your accounts. Um, and so for that reason, yeah, see, here's the exact same account right here, same balance. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it right back in and there's all my assets again, right there. Um, yeah, so, so knowing that um, with Ledger Live, Occasionally, for instance, like if you have Ledger Live open for too long, like for several days and the, the, the application gets hung up or if your internet connection isn't great, um, honestly, or if there's just a lot of traffic in the crypto world, like so many things. If you have a VPN running on your computer, you know, that's routing your IP and your, um, you know, it, it's, it's causing your connection to be a little bit slow or there are so many reasons that it can happen. Honestly, if you just have too many accounts in Ledger Live, um, it can get hung up and it can like air, it can time out and error out. And maybe you'll have like a, let me show you real quick. Like over here, maybe in your account, you'll have like, instead of a green check mark, you'll have like a little red X or something, um, you know, that's saying it's not synchronized. All, all that means is that Ledger Live is now, it's, it's having, it's currently having issues pulling in your, uh, your account data from the blockchain. And so if that ever does happen, Clearing your cache um, resets Ledger Live and forces it to sync up uh, with the blockchain with all your accounts. So it'll pull in all of the correct data. Um, so, you know, I, as the you know, employee of Ledger, I use Ledger Live constantly because, you know, it's my job to show people how to how to use the application. I have to clear my cache pretty regularly. Um, I mean, I don't have to like it will usually update eventually on its own and it does a pretty good job doing that. But if you're looking for like, you know, like like you, you, you send some tokens to your account in Ledger Live or some some crypto to it and you see on the transaction that you have pulled up online that it's confirmed and it's 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 like sent to your account, not showing up in Ledger Live, it's probably beneficial to just clear cash real quick just to like, you know, get it to show. Um, so, yes, very common. Um, uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's it's no big deal. Uh, it's just kind of you know get getting used to kind of like how how things go in the crypto world. It, it can happen with uh, pretty much every wallet. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that makes sense. All right, we are getting a little low on time, but I will answer any questions that are left to the best of my ability. All right. Yeah, uh, Mateus, totally understandable. Um, the only information we have on that is that it's going to be released this summer. Um, yeah. So, sorry, I don't have any uh, further updates for you on that. Um, all right, WWJD, hello again. Uh, checking in with my ordinals. You guys have a lot of knowledge to share. Awesome. Good to see you. Um, Matt, I believe he was helping Matt. Let me just read quick just to make sure. Um, yeah, um, Matt, that's totally valid. Uh, to totally valid. And yes, you're, you're, you're right there. Uh, lately there have been, um, a little bit more 
been lately instances of people having to clear their cash. Um, not entirely sure what's really causing it, um, but it seems to be mostly affecting like Ethereum and Ethereum virtual machine chains, like, like Binance Smart Chain, Polygon. Um, so let me show you one other thing that you can do um, to always verify inside Ledger Live without having to go outside of Ledger Live. So you can come here to the Discover tab. Um, and you can go and find the Zerion right here. It's this blue symbol right here with the little white uh, triangles. You can go to that. We continue. And then you can see it, it automatically pulls in um, all the account data. It shows all of my tokens um, on, it looks like I, I even have some ETH on Arbitrum right here. Um, it's, got, it's, it's picking up my Matic and my Polygon account, which I don't even have. I don't even think I have it. Yeah, I don't even have it added to Ledger Live, but the but the DAP is, you know, it's finding it. It sees that in my account. So this is a cool place to go to, and you can actually send from here, um, swap. You can do all, all kinds of cool stuff from here from the Zerion DAP. Um, so if you ever are having issues inside Ledger Live, you, you can come here and ju just to verify, like, okay, I know that I have these tokens in my wallet. Let me just see. And this this will show you everything that's in your wallet. Um, and then you can go back to your account, you can clear cash and uh, do, do what you got to do there. Yes, you're very welcome, Matt. Happy to help. Um, okay. Peachy is still helping Ernest. All right. Yes, WWJD, smash that like button. <laughs> um, let's see. Dada just came in with, or I should still have it in my hot wallet to use that DAPS. Um, I'm not too sure what, um, what you mean by that. If, uh, yeah, so if you have if you have it in a hot wallet, it won't be in Ledger Live. And the if you're talking about the Zerion DAP, it, and it won't detect anything that's not in Ledger Live. It'll only detect account um, accounts that you have. So, like for instance, if I were to go here, let me show you. Go here. I'm going to go and just remove this from Ledger Live. Remove that from portfolio. And then I go here. Let me go ahead and clear the cash. Just to make sure the Zerion DAP isn't still picking up on that wallet address. Okay, sync that up. Go back to Discover. Come down to Zerion. Continue. And I, it, I don't have any accounts. So it, it'll only see accounts that you have in Ledger Live. Um, the reason that it sees my... Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and just add the account real quick back in. You can see that you can do the same thing right here. Ethereum, continue. Um, the reason that it was able to detect that I had assets on Polygon as well as Arbitrum from the same wallet address is because your wallet address for Ethereum virtual machine chains is always going to be the same, um, except for under like specific situations. Um, but mostly it's going to be the same. So uh, the Zerion DAP was able to ping all the different um, blockchains and see that I had assets on these different uh, blockchains, but with the same wallet address. Yeah. Cool. So we'll go ahead and add that back in. All right. Sweet. And let's see. Yep. Yeah, Skyfall. Um, noted. Um, I, there's not really much I can do about that here, but I will definitely uh, take that down as a note and provide it to our marketing team for feedback. Um, yes. So I'll go ahead and do that for you. All right, I think that pretty much does it for today. It looks like, uh, so a huge shout out to Peachy for uh, popping in here and helping out with your uh, specific knowledge. Um, all the members of our team have different areas that we're all kind of good at. Um, and to be honest, like I am not the most knowledgeable on the team. I'm just, you know, like willing to come up here on YouTube. Um, so it's really cool when we have uh, people like Peachy that can pop in. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much does it. All right, sweet. So our next um, AMA is going to be on Wednesday, so two days from now. Um, same time, Pacific Standard Time, uh, 4 p.m. Um, and I believe, hmm, actually, I believe there may be a, um, 
uh, the EU team may be doing one tomorrow as well. So be on the lookout for that. So I'm going to go ahead and check with them and get that scheduled if that's the case. Um, so yeah, so follow us on YouTube and uh, always uh, hit the notify me button if you want to get notified when these live streams start. We usually do a pretty good job at scheduling them in advance so you guys can you know prepare for them. Um, yeah, and uh, bring your questions. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, great. So I will see you guys all on Wednesday and I hope you have a fantastic couple days. Stay safe out there.